Yo, what up? Welcome to the Flutter and Firebase Masterclass. In this one, I'm going to teach you the four most important operations when it comes to databases. And I'm going to show you by coding up a super simple notes app where you can create a new note, read the notes from a database, as well as updating and deleting. So let's go to your Firebase console and let's create a new project. I'm just going to call it CRUD Tutorial. And I'm just going to create this now. Cool, so now what we need to do is we need to connect our Firebase with our Flutter project. So I've opened up here a brand new Flutter project. And let's open up the terminal. And if you've never used the Flutter Fire CLI before, then you're going to need to install this one. But I've already done that, so I'm just going to skip that step. And the first thing we need to do is to say Firebase login to make sure that you're logged into the same email as the Firebase console. Then let's say flutter pub global activate the flutter fire CLI. Looks like we have a little error thing. I'm just going to copy this and paste it in. Sweet. Then let's say flutter fire configure and let's look for our Firebase project that we just made. So there it is crud tutorial and I'm going to choose Android and iOS. Let's say flutter pub add firebase core. Awesome. And then we always need to add this little code in the main function just to set up. So widgets flutter binding ensure that it's initialized. And then let's change this to an asynchronous function and await firebase initialize app. Cool. And I always just kill the app and restart it just to make sure everything's working fine. And there it is. And if you come back to your Firebase console and you refresh it, you should be able to see we connected the two apps. So the Android and the iOS. Awesome. Now the first thing we want to do here is go to the build. We want to have the Firestore database. And let's create a database. Hit next. And you can choose your location, but I'm just going to leave it at US. Cool. And then if you come to the rules, you can see it's allowing the read and write. I'm just going to change this, the write to be true. And this just means we can now save data into it. Sweet. Now let's come back to our Flutter project again. And let's add in this package for the Firestore. So Flutter pub add cloud Firestore. And now we can access our database. So I'm going to delete everything below the main function and just create this from scratch. So I've got my app and then our material app. And I'm just going to call it a home page. And it's always good practice to put your pages in a separate folder. And this can be a blank scaffold. And let's come back to our main dot dot and then let's import this. Cool. So we should just have a blank scaffold. Sweet. And let's just set up this app, just the basics of it. So the app bar. And I just want to have a floating action button. So that's the thing on the bottom right. Let's give it a plus icon. Cool. So now I'm going to create a new folder called services. And I'm going to have firestore dot dot. And so I'm going to put all the operations into this file here. So class firestore service. Now the very first thing we need to do is to get the collection of notes from the database. And then we're going to have the four things. So create, read, update, and delete. And specifically for us in this app, we're going to say like create means adding a new note. Read is getting the note from the database. And then we want to update notes. And same thing as deleting. Cool. So if I start with the first one here, let's get the collection reference of notes and let's call the collection just notes. If I just quickly code just the first function here for the creating, we want to have a future and this is for adding a note. So I'm going to accept a parameter, just a string for what the note is. And the bit of code you need to know, if we go to the notes, you can see after the dot, the add method. 
And in these curly braces, you can also have multiple fields. So let's say in the note field, I want to give it the note, but let's also have a timestamp. Cool. And so let's try to test this out with our floating action button. So if I click on this button here, I want to open up a small box to get the user to type something in. So if I create a method here real quick, let's open note box and let's show the dialogue. And we're going to need the context. So I'm actually going to change this to a stateful widget. So if you hover over this stateless widget and you press on Mac, it's command dot. And you can see you got this option here. I think on Windows, it might be control dot. We can now build this dialogue. And let's just start off with a blank text field. So just to test this out, if I save this, I click on the plus and sweet, here's our little dialogue box. And then you got the text field inside where we can type in. So how do we access what the user typed? Well, we need a text controller. So you can see in the text field, we can give it the text controller. And then now we need a button. So in the actions, let's have a button to save. So I'm just going to use an elevated button. And let's say add. Cool, so we want to type a node in and then we want to hit add to save it. So currently it's executing nothing. So inside these braces, let's add a new note. And we want to access the methods from this Firestore class, right? So at the top here, let's get the Firestore service object at the top. And then now we can say Firestore service and then we can access all of those methods. So dot add note and we want to give it the note. So that's going to be the text controller. Cool. And then just a couple UI things we need to do. So after you add the note, we want to clear what's in the text controller and just leave it blank after it's added in. And then we also want to close the box. So let's try this. First note and I add it and nothing's happening on our app because we are not reading it yet. But if I come back to my console, and I refresh it. You can see there's our notes and we've got our first document and there's our first note there. So that's the natural next step we need to do, right? We need to be able to read now that we can create. So let's fill out the read method here. Now read, we're going to use a stream and a stream builder to sort of continuously listen to any changes in our database. So let's call this get notes stream. And we want to get the notes and we can now order them by the timestamp. So descending, let's say true, meaning the newest one is going to be at the top. Cool. So if I come back to my UI in the home page, in the body of the scaffold, we want to use the stream builder. And you can see inside here, we have to give it a stream. And so we can give it our get notes stream. And so that's what it's going to be listening to. And then we can build the UI. So firstly, let's just check if the snapshot has data, then we can get the docs. So let's create a list here called notes list. And we want to display it as a list view. Cool. So just to have a bit of plan about what we're doing. So the first thing is let's get the individual document. And then we want to get the string of notes from the document. And then let's give that to a list tile to display nicely in the UI. So the first thing is let's just get the individual document. So we're going through the index of the notes list. And one bit of useful information for our other couple methods coming up is going to be this document ID just to keep track of the notes. So I'm just going to use this a bit later on. Now let's get the note from each document and store it in this data variable. So what we really want is just a string for the note text. And in the data, we can get this particular field called note. Sweet. So now let's display it as a list tile for the UI. And everything's all good, except we can finish off this if else. And so if there's no data, then let's just return no notes. Cool. And looks like we have some range error. Oh, that's because we didn't specify the item count. 
So that's just going to be however long the notes list is. Sweet, so let's just save this and rerun it. And you can see now we can read our database and we've got the first note, which means we should be able to create a second note. And there it is. Cool, so we can create and we can read now. The last couple is the update. So this one we need to know the doc ID. So we need to know which note we're updating. And we also need to know what the new note is going to be. So for this one, if you go to the notes, let's go to the particular doc ID and then let's just update and you can just update the fields. So if I come back to my UI, let's just go to the trailing and let's, let's have a gear button. So I'm just going to have an icon button here and let's have a settings icon. Yeah, it's probably good. Cool. There's a gear. And so if I click on this, currently it's executing nothing. So what I want to do is I want to open up another box so that the user can type something in. Now let's see if we can recycle what we already used just to be efficient with our code. So we already have a open note box method here for when we add a new note. Now let's just add a parameter here for the document ID. And I'm going to put a question mark here. And what that means is this can potentially be null. I made a whole video about null safety. So check that out if you need. So when we call this method and we're giving the parameter document ID, we want a string, but it could also be a null value. So the reason why I'm doing this is because when we hit the button to save, let's put a little if statement here. So if the document ID is null, then we're going to add a new note. And then otherwise we want to update an existing note. Okay, so if I come down to my button here, then we can just open the note box and just give it the doc ID. Let's hit the gear. We can now put in a new text. And you can see it got updated. Sweet. Which brings us to the last one, which is the deleting. Same thing, we need to know which note we're deleting. So let's accept the document ID as a parameter. And once we know that, let's just go to that document in the notes and just delete. And then in our UI, we need to have another delete button. So in the trailing, let's just put in a quick row here and have the button. So one's for the update and let's just copy it to create another one for the delete. And for the on pressed, we just want to call the delete note and switch up the icon. Cool. And by the way, if you save this, you're going to get an error. So you need to specify the main access size to be minimum. Cool. So if I try this and if I delete it and then it will get deleted and that's it. That's how you use the CRUD operations. Now we can use this to make some other cool apps using Flutter and Firebase. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.